Hello my art loving friends. I have a happy mail art haul for you today. A couple of things that I just got and something that I got back in the beginning of April and I opened it and looked at it then but I didn't play with anything and I don't think I've shown you guys it yet. So let's start with this. All right, this just came today. This is by a viewer and a lady that I consider a friend. I'm really curious because she said after she watched the last video where I was struggling getting the masking fluid off, she couldn't help herself and sent me a few things, <laughs> which is so cute. <laughs> so let's see what we have. Oh my gosh, <laughs> a mini hot air gun. Oh, that's hilarious, I love it. <laughs> yeah, I was re-watching one of my videos and it was from like two years ago. And I was like, if I don't get my heat gun out of the closet this weekend, then there's something wrong with me. Well, I still haven't looked for any heat gun in my closet. In fact, I may not even have it. I may have gotten rid of it with my other scrapbooking stuff when I purged all that because I didn't think I would need it because I have looked in the bag that I kept of scrapbooking stuff. I did actually look there once and it wasn't in there. So this, this is great. And it can just live on my desk. It looks so industrial tool-like, I love it. All right, are you ready for this? Very nice. What's this? It's a shrink tube accessory. And it says the shrink tube accessory can be used whenever circular airflow is required. It is often used to shrink the tubing around electrical connections or to soften a plastic tube that must be bent at a specific location. Oh, there's one more thing in there. Taped really well. <laughs> Not that well. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, this is great. <laughs> so my student has one of these sets, that probably this exact same box of the, and I'm like, oh, these are for removing masking fluid, and it's really cool, and I was hinting like she would never use three, and I would offer to buy one from her, but <laughs> anyway, um, she, she didn't offer to sell it, so I didn't get one, but look, masking fluid eraser thingy. I can't wait to try that. Too bad I don't have something with masking fluid. Oh, I do from, class except I won't be able to use it until after class on Tuesday and then these little masking fluid applicator majiggers so they screw open and shut so you can have different thicknesses cool this is so much fun I am all set for getting tape and masking fluid off this is great thank you so much really anxious to try this out it's definitely going to class with me because that's the day we're taking masking fluid off I'm gonna go put this in the bag right now awesome I hate moving on to the like the next thing because there's the first thing is still so cool, but you know, we gotta get to it, we gotta get to it. So yes, this was sent back to me in April. I opened it, looked at it, and loved it. <laughs> but I didn't do anything with it. I don't know why I didn't show it to you guys. It seems silly, but anyway, this is <laughs> the most ridiculous paint palette you have ever seen. I have one just like it. <laughs> Kim Mini Palette, not good for old eyes and hands. So, how funny. So let's see what's in there. I remember actually, and it's so darn cute. <laughs> open, open, there we go. Look at that. Oh, I didn't realize it was magnetized. So lots of magnets on the back and a bunch of tiny little colors. Yeah, a little 3D printed palette thing, cool. They are, oh, I did not realize these were Holbein. It's been too long since I've looked at this. So now I have Holbein watercolors. That's so cool, I did have three that Diane sent me originally in that very first video where she sent me all those Daniel Smith paints. Three of them were Holbein, and I'll link that video in case you missed it up there. It was an amazing, generous gift, and so is this. This is Holbein watercolors. Wow, we're gonna have to try that. So this is the Kim mini palette, I think, that she was talking about in this note, and boy, is that cute. This reminds me a lot, I don't know if you saw that post from uh, Lindsay Wyrick, the frugal crafter. Anyway, she reposted the video where that one lady was making a mini palette similar to this out of ketchup lids. And I was intrigued and I thought, oh, I should try that. But she had to switch the lid back over to the top and then tape it and I didn't really like that. And this right here, I mean, just go get this instead. This is meant for it and it looks a lot nicer, but look how little. What paint are we going to squeeze in here? How many wells are there? Let's see, one, 12 in the center. And then I could probably spray this with my appliance white and have a little white mixing area. It's kind of cool to be able to see your paint through this though, but having a mixing area would be great. 
This is a black paint and I forget what it was. So she emailed me what these were, so hang on. So the number one, she said she didn't write on them because I write the, what'd she say? I write nicer on my pans. <laughs> I also consider this particular viewer a good friend, by the way. Okay, so this one is Mission Gold Cobalt Black PBK 27 has beautiful granulation. So this was sent to me after I did that super granulation video. I'll link that in the corner for you too, in case you missed that. And I was saying how I really wish I had the PBK 11 that was in a tube. So she sent me that too. So I guess we could just go right to that. This is the Oxide Black PBK 11, light fastness one. So now I have black that is highly granulating in a tube and I could finish some of those mixes that I wanted to do over in that other video or from that other video. Okay, so this one's Mission Gold, Cobalt Black. This one, number two, ooh, is the Rembrandt Spinel. Is that how you say that? I'm not sure. PBK 26. So Kim, she's saying Kim mentioned it, Kimberly Crick mentioned it in her black pigment list. Did a fantastic black cat painting. Nice. This is great. What else? A little stippling brush from the Dollar Tree. Great for stippling. So I should try this on bushes and trees. That would be really fun. Gotta figure out what to put in there. So cool, thank you, thank you, thank you guys. This is way too much fun. I don't know, it's like the stuff you guys send me is more special to me <laughs> than stuff that I get myself. Isn't that ironic? But it's like you guys are thinking of me and that's so sweet and so special. So thank you. And this was sent to me, ta-da. So I've seen these kind of on YouTube a lot lately. And in fact, the Frugal Crafter just did a review on the metallic version of these. They looked spectacular. She also did use these in a video, but did not specifically like review the markers. She's definitely said some comments about them in that video, but it was my understanding from that video that her review was still coming up. But then she put out the, uh, metallic one instead first. So I either missed it or I misunderstood. So let's see what these are like. So this is the brand that like the parent company is Lightwish. So same as like the Himi Mia gouache and the Ardex gouache and all of that. I'm kind of excited about these because you don't have to shake them and you don't have to pump the thing to get them to work. And two layers that my studio lights are doing a number on them, aren't they? Well, I'll show you what I mean. I'll take this green, because I love greens. And there's the brush nib, and it just works right from the beginning. <laughs> no prep to get this going. So these look incredibly fun. That's the bullet nib, you can see what that looks like there. All right, we're gonna have to play, play, play. And then, a late Mother's Day gift. Ah, can you believe this? My first Imgram paints ever. It's like my first official tubes of Imgram paint. So let's open them up. I've been dying to see what the tubes look like. And this is the Steve Mitchell version. And when, apparently when you order this set, at least for a limited time, it comes with a free pad of 100% cotton, 300 GSM, Hanamule Cezanne watercolor paper cold pressed. So how cool is that? These were ordered at the right time. Here they are. Oh, there's half of them. <laughs> They're in two different things. Hang on. Got to be smarter than the box now. Okay, there we go. Oh, they're so pretty. It's so cool. Be tempted to put them in here. <laughs> it's tiny though. This is exciting. Ah, what is it about getting new paint and paper and all these toys and stuff. It's just really fun. Here are the colors. So these are the ones, like I said, Steve Mitchell from The Mind of Watercolor has chosen and they put together this set with him and it was a collaboration with Wet Paint Art and it's a company I've mentioned before because they are who I ordered the Hanamule cotton sketchbooks from. They are in the United States and this is the only place you can get this particular set, but these colors are spectacular. Can't wait to try them out. Well, let's go ahead and see what this paper looks like. We might as well. Okay, so I guess it's a $10 item. Wow, it's a closeout item, so that's probably why it's coming free with some of the orders. The MSRP, though, was originally $37. What does $37 paper look like? 
It is a block. Hanamule watercolor board. Choosing this watercolor block, you have made an excellent quality choice. <laughs> the high class board is very stable and ensures improved flatness when wet and even flow of paint and high intensity colors. Oh, that's a good thing I didn't try and get this off because you can see it has the lines through it like packing tape kind of, some, some packing tape, so. Anyway, 100% cotton block. Wow, that's no wonder the MSRP was $37. Anyway, it feels a lot smoother than Arches, even though it's cold pressed, smoother than the Bao Hong. So it'll be interesting to try that out. We'll have to try it out with these babies. <laughs> well, also stay tuned because I am going to give you an update on that online class video I did where I did it three hours straight. She did reply to me, so stay tuned because I'm gonna go right into that now. So if you missed that video, check that out. I'll link that in the corner. Watch that one first and then come back to the end of this and watch that. So let's let's get into what she said. All right, we're doing this in the same order that I showed these to you in that video. So the first one is the house. I uploaded a picture of it and said, here is my house and tree after being enrolled for two years. <laughs> anyway, maybe one year, I don't remember. Anyway, what she said is it's a nice painting, Miranda. The roof color of your house is so beautiful. She wants to let me know that I should draw window frames with two lines because it looks more three dimensional. What is my take on that? My take is I absolutely agree with her. <laughs> and that is a good reminder to draw window frames with two lines. Definitely. Cool. All right. Now on to the cone flowers. Ready for this? Here's mine. I said I don't like them and would like to try them again. She's like, why? I love your beautiful color, which looks soft. If, I, if you still don't like your painting, add any dark color between petals with thin lines. And then she said, I but it cut off. So I don't know if that was the end of her comment or if she meant to put more, but so if I don't like it, basically she's saying increase the contrast here and pull this the lines out a little bit. So anyway, that's cool. That's more than I expected her. I don't know. I expected her to maybe say more about it, like give more tips, like maybe it wasn't very good, but no, she liked it. Okay. And the balloons. This one's the bad one. Ready for this? Here they are. In this chapter, we learned the wet on wet technique. She actually meant dry on wet because you can see over here, oh, wet on dry, same difference. So yeah, the technique was wet on dry and that's the lesson we're in. And so I was supposed to let the green balloon and the blue balloon dry before putting the purple one on. So she meant the dry on wet technique here. So I should have painted when the blue and green balloons dried and then I could add them now so that it's showing that overlap. So that's all she said about that was, I just didn't do the exercise right, which we knew because I told you guys <laughs> I didn't do it right. I was just doing my own thing. <laughs> so there you go, there's the update on that. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I thought it was really cool and how quickly she got back to me because it was several days ago that she got back to me. So now I just have to go finish all the rest of these lessons and I will. And uh, would you guys like to see that? Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to film that again. I have decided that what I want to put in this mini palette is the Imgram paint because I have all my other paint already poured into palettes and so I might as well. I think that would be really fun. I have 13 slots and only 10 tubes of paint. So these colors here, I'm going to duplicate. I know in my painting, at least right now, I use a lot of light yellow. So I'll put two of the light yellow in there. For some reason, I also use a lot of dark colors, so I'm thinking of doubling up on the neutral tint, and then I'll have one more slot that I can double up on another color, and I'm deciding if I want that to be the Quin Rose or the Ultramarine Blue, so I'll decide that by the time I start pouring, right? <laughs> I have to, because <laughs> I actually want to put the duplicates next to each other, so I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to put this, I'm a little nervous about doing this in such a small palette because sometimes these explode when you first open them. That's not too bad. So for the Azo yellow, what I'm thinking is to put them right next to each other when they're the duplicates. That way the brush can just kind of go over both of them and not a big deal. Yeah, these are so tiny, these wells. And admittedly, it was a little bit hard to get the paint in there without kind of messing up the one next to it. So I had to be really careful and still messed up a few of them. Just barely though, so it's not a huge big deal. And then the transparent red iron oxide binder came out. All right, there it is. It's so cute. I have a little bit of a mess here, but oh well, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> Ugh. So this has a lot of honey in it and I am curious, usually like with my Daniel Smith paints, when I pour them, I can leave them out 
even just like a day and they are pretty well dry and I can use them like dried out paint because that's pretty much how they are. So I think I will leave these for today and see how they are tomorrow. I'm gonna try and just leave them open. Maybe just put a box lid over them so the cats can't get into them or like maybe dump these out and put over there. There we go. Maybe tilt it up on the edge like that. We'll see if that dries at all. And I gotta clean up. And I had a piece of Arches paper left over from something I did recently. And so I cut off this little strip and did a swatch sheet for this cute little palette. I used a size six round and it worked okay. So we'll see in the next video when I do a painting how well it works with brushes getting in those little squares. It's kind of fun to see what you can do with little tiny things like this. I could not wait for class on Tuesday. <laughs> so I put some masking fluid. This is the PBO masking fluid and it's on Arches paper. So let's see how this works. I can't wait. Here we go. Oh, that is so nice and easy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is still super sticky. Like, can you see? It's like really, ugh. It's really sticking to this masking fluid eraser. Look at that. But I did tell you guys that this one is like two years old, I'm guessing. I would have to go watch every old video of mine <laughs> to find out for sure when I got it. But it's old. Still working, but it's old. So it, yeah, it gets sticky. Wow, this works so nicely. And I know several of you have told me to keep the balls and use that for a masking fluid eraser. I've tried that and I have a hard time getting them to stick together. So I think maybe it's like a PBO issue or it's just too old already, I don't know. Wow, this is so sticky. I'm really impressed. I thought it would just be more abrasive and it's not, it's sticky. It's so cool. Look at how sticky it is. <laughs> That's why it works so well. And did the PBO stain the paper? It kind of did. It's very subtle, very subtle. I don't think it would be a problem yet, but it did stain it a little bit. This is a winner. Here's this one all dry. And I thought this would dry more opaque, but that's pretty neat. That was just one layer of the Chinese white. So not bad. I bet if I did another layer of that, then it'd probably be quite a bit opaque. Now I can laminate this. I did label it. I made a mistake. So I have to finish labeling that one real quick. And I used my circle template and some scrap arches paper and did this. I didn't get that middle thing quite in the center, but it's okay. It's just a swap sheet for the palette and I left enough room around the edge that I can laminate it and cut it and not lose the seal on the lamination. So it's a little smaller than the palette on purpose. The next day, let's see, oh, it's tacky. So not fully liquid. And that neutral tint was the last one I poured. Let's try one other. I'm trying to get the hair off my hands. There's still a little stain from yesterday and I got it in my nails, the paint in my nails, which I didn't go grab a nail remover thingy. Oh, oopsie. The green is very wet still. But that seems like the only one. Well, I'm not going to touch them all because that was a mistake. Oops. So anyway, I'll make this little swatch sheet and then we will do bigger swatches of this and try out that Hanamule paper. And I decided to use my round six brush for this again, which it is kind of a big brush for the little areas in this little swatch sheet, but it worked. And then I had to wait for those outer rings to dry to do these in the middle one, I didn't wait, and so we had some bleeding. And then we move right into the swatching on the big paper. This is the Hanamule Cezanne that we're swatching on. This is the Azo Yellow PY151. And so what I cut out of this video is that I am wetting every single rectangle ahead of time, and then I put the paint down onto it. And I am using a round size 10 brush here on this. I think it's my 10, not my 12. Yeah, it's my 10. So it's kind of interesting getting a huge big brush in this tiny little palette. Anyway, this one there is the Scarlet Pyrrol P073. And I'm also not showing you that I am putting salt on it after I put the paint down. So that's the stuff that's cut out of here to try and make it not too long. That one is the Dioxazine Purple PV23. That one only has a light fast of two. And I think every single other paint in this set has a light fastness of one, which is the highest rated for Imgram. It's really fun to see how these are spreading in water. At least some of them are spreading really amazingly. It's kind of fun. It's every time fun that they spread in water like that. This one is the Ultramarine Blue. It's a typical PB29 with light fastness one. 
everything else is light fastness of one, so I probably won't say that anymore. So you can tell I'm putting down a really light wash of the color first and then trying to go back over and deepen it. That one is the Azo Green and it's a PY129. And in the back of the box made it look much greener than it was. So I left it in the location that it was. But I think if I were to put this in a big palette, I would probably put this more over with the yellows. I know it does have a very green tint to it. So maybe not, but that one's kind of a hard decision for me where I would really like it in my palette. I expected that neutral tint right there to spread a lot more, but it didn't. It's a PV19 and a PG7. And because of those two pigments, it's a very, very pretty neutral tint. I love it. Next up is the Indian Yellow. This is a PY110. Very nice yellow. This next one is one of my favorites. In fact, I went back to the box and looked because this is such a bright rose color that I thought there's no way this one can be light fast, but it is called the Quinn Rose. It is made with the PV19 and says it's light fastness of one, but it is such a beautiful bright rose. I thought, no way, Jose, but <laughs> we will see. I'll put it in my light fast window testing area and see what happens. This next one here, is the Thalo Green, and I went back and I made sure it was actually a Thalo Green. It's a PG7. I thought, oh, this has to be an actual Viridian, right? Because it has very low tinting strength, and I thought, well, they wouldn't call it a Thalo Green if it was a Viridian because they don't do that. <laughs> so sure enough, it's Thalo Green. Whatever that long word is, the copper thiosilatamine, whatever the official one is, but it is a PG7. This one is very interesting color, kind of neat. Transparent Red Iron Oxide, PR101, definitely reminds me of a lot of the burnt siennas that I enjoy using because it takes a little bit to get, a, I don't know, a heavy lay down of pigment, but the color is beautiful, and a lot of the burnt siennas I like are also PR101, so no big mystery there. Now I went right into trying the blacks, and that one is the Mission Gold, and I wanted to see how they spread in water, so again, I am putting water down on the rectangle first, and I cut that out of the video. And I don't really get to pay these blacks the attention they deserve in this particular video, but hopefully by the next video we can play with these a little bit more. But yeah, the Mission Gold is obviously granulating. You can see that immediately when it lays down. This next one is the Rembrandt Spinel, and I was trying to see if it spread in water as well, and not as much as I thought it might, but no big deal. This one you can tell is a lot smoother. It looked like it had quite a bit of granulation when it was wet like this, but I don't know if I just added too much pigment or what. This just is not a very granulating color, but you'll see how it turns out when it's dry. This is the Van Gogh out of the tube. This is the PBK11 Oxide Black. Highly granulating. You can tell that right away. Okay, finally everything is dry. They look quite beautiful. The salt effect on this one I was Putting the salt on it looked immediate, but as the salt and the paint dried through and it just kind of lifted the paint, it looks like I didn't even paint that section, so that's interesting. However, the other salt effects are pretty typical-ish, like not very much movement here, 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 usual places, except that one. That one's very intriguing. And on the black and white, I should say just the blacks, right? So this first one is the Mission Gold, and I did, there's no salt left. It just made those really dark spots. When I was putting the paint down, I thought, oh, this is going to be really highly granulating. It's kind of cool. Now that it's dried, though, it would be something that I would use if I wanted just like a black tint to something, like a little black background, because it is highly granulating. It is just very light. I did use a lot of water, though, so there is that. This middle one is the Rembrandt Spinel if I'm saying that correctly. Lots of salt effects and it really spread out and it's a very smooth lay down of color, which kind of surprised me because when I was putting it down, I couldn't tell that for sure. So yeah, really smooth black. That could be interesting. This one, holy moly. <laughs> what a find, right? This is the Van Gogh PBK 11. All the salt is off and it did leave the black clumps just like the Mission Gold, but you can see the granulation is much deeper. It just seems a little bit richer, well a lot bit richer than the Mission Gold. So it's kind of interesting and I absolutely love it. I think they're all unique in their own ways and this would be a great one for a smooth lay down of color. 
These, again, a, for a tint of black. If you just wanted something that was slightly granulating, a little bit black, that one would be really cool. And if you wanted a deep, dark, granulating black, this one is the way to go. All right, I am out of time, but there are things we still have to try. We still need to do a painting with these Imgram watercolors. We need to play with these blacks some more. We need to do a painting with these Holbein watercolors, and we need to figure out what we can do with this incredibly fun set. So not everything is in here that I showed you in this video, but we have a good sampling here. All right, if you are brand new, make sure you subscribe down below with all notifications turned on because in the next video, I will be doing a painting with this Holbein little set and this cute little Imgram set on this Hanamule Suzanne paper down here on this bottom half. So I'll cut it in half. One side will be Imgram, one side will be Holbein and we'll see how hard or easy it is to use these tiny little sets. I also have some really great videos coming up on my channel. More new watercolors to me, things that I've shown you in art hauls before that I still need to use up, plus a couple of catch-up videos that you'll be really excited to see, I hope, and it should be a really good time. All right, guys, I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Sorry, checking on the puppies, tearing apart the cat toy again, just like last time. My husband's supposed to be home tonight at 11, so... <laughs> I'm only the puppy sitter for the rest of today, which is gonna be really sad, by the way. <laughs> Cause he and I are attached in these last five days that I've had him to myself. All right, we have such a fun selection of goodies and I know you probably want me to try them out in this video, but I'm not sure that I have time for that. If I do, then this part won't even be in the video. <laughs> anyway, okay. I don't know why I found that so amusing, but I did. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me today. See you in the next video. All right. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. And thank you for the gifts. That's so generous and so sweet. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. We're going to let these sit. Oh, look, there was hair in that. And now it's all over this. Just can't win in this house with hair. <laughs> Definitely, if you're new, subscribe down below because I will paint with these Holbein watercolors and this cute little palette in the next few videos here and there. Hang on, why is there so much hair all the time and everything? Why is that green so wet? <laughs> Look, ah! Get her, get her. Make her growl, I want him on video. What did you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's <laughs> 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 just like